Hi, welcome to Tiny Garage Fabrication. My name is Matt, and today I'll be doing something cool on my Forerunner. All right, so I had this idea. There's a mod that people do to their third gen Forerunners called the ISR or the Intake Silencer Removal. I've been wanting to do it for quite a while, and I've had an idea of what it is that I wanted to do, and I finally made the parts last night. So let's go under the hood of the Forerunner. I'll show you what the parts are we're going to remove and I'll show you what I'm going to replace it with. Guys, right, so here we are under the hood of my 1998 Toyota Forerunner. This has the 3.4 liter V6. I've done some powder coating on the valve covers. I did the intake and then cleaned everything up. I did all this when I took it all apart to change the timing belt sticker so that I did that. Anyway, <clears throat> the ISR delete is to get rid of these big boxes right here. A plastic box here, there's one back here, and there's a little snorkel stubby tube thing down there. It's kind of hard to see. What these are are Helmholtz resonators. So as the air goes in there, it uses those chambers to kind of bounce sound around and it makes the intake sound a little bit quieter. This is generally done in conjunction with the deck plate mod, which is to put a removable door in the front of the air box to get more air flow. I have a deck plate, I'm going to do that, I just, not today. <clears throat> anyway, my plan for these is uh, pretty simple. This here is the most complex of them all because there's a hose that goes to the fuel pressure regulator. So all I have to do is, um, this obviously just uses some of the ported intake air. So with these clips, these things come out and that's all it is, it's a little box. And then this one here had a zip tie type clip in it that kept this wire right there. So I've got a, something cool in store for that. And then this one here just comes out. I've already loosened all these clamps. And then finally, the little U-shaped guy on the bottom. Anyway, let's go in the garage and I'll show you what I did to take care of these. All right, here we go. Here's the silencers. Here's the one that was on the rear, the one on the front, and the one on the bottom. What I did is I took these inside and I measured the diameter of this as well as I took note of where these little flares were and where the caps were. And then on these ones here, there's a little, a small little square locating tab. You can kind of see right here. I went ahead and took measurements on all that and went into Fusion 360 and I designed some simple caps. So this meets the diameter, there's a little flare, and it's got a nice little uh, lip on it. For this one here, it's got the little flared edge, it's solid, has that little square cap right there, and then, remember how this had the slot for this little guy? Well, this one I put the slot right there, so, let me um, put this down. So I got the slot, here's the little zip tie holder, and it just pops in there like that. So it fits very well, and I'll be able to run a zip tie through that to keep that cable in place where it was. And then for this one here, I printed this out. It's got the same little square notch for locating it. I put a hole all the way through it. Now I had designed it with threads in Fusion 360, but when I exported it to my 3D printer, it didn't print the threads, so I had bought a quarter inch NPT pipe tap, and I tapped the threads in this. This has a 1.2 millimeter wall, so there's plenty of thickness to tap. Anyway, the tap still didn't work, so what I ended up doing was actually just heating up this right here, and then screwing it in, so it kind of used both elements of heat to self-clearance as well as the threads that I did tap in there. Anyway, it's a secure fit. It basically sealed itself. It's NPT anyway, so the tapered threads, they do seal themselves. Now I didn't... I, need to, I needed to extend this hose. I didn't have any stuff on board, so this is a piece of reinforced DOT airline. This is what I use for the air suspensions and my other builds. Anyway, it's a uh, it's the right diameter on the inside. It needed heated a little bit to get over these barbs, and it's going to need heated just a little bit to get over the fuel pressure thing in there. I'm also going to use a little bit of heat so that I can put some permanent bends in this to make it a nice hard line from here to there. 
Let's go drop them in and I'll show you how they fit. Right, well, here it is all installed. The big plug with the nipple on it. The line goes to the inlet of the fuel pressure regulator. Sits in this little clip. The one on the bottom is clearly in place. The one on the back with the little clip that holds the wire there. Make sure that sits pretty good. All right, and that's it. Everything's on and tight and done. Pretty cool little deal. So I'm probably going to make several pairs of these. I'm even going to make another one that has two holes in it because I guess some of these Forerunners had a vacuum line that led down to the power steering. Mine does not have that, but I guess some of them did, so I'm going to make that optional. And then I will probably put the brass nipples in and try to sell these. So, you know, if you see these and you like them, you know, shoot me a message, leave a comment, and uh, I'll find a way to get them and find a fair price and get them shipped out. But it's a super simple swap. You don't have to change this. You don't have to duct tape it. You don't have to buy Toyota parts. So I saw that a lot of people try to change these out with newer ones. You need to try to find them in the junkyard or buy them from Toyota for like 70 bucks. Uh, even with those, you need to modify them by putting a piece of aluminum pipe in and then finding a nipple to attach this. This here seems like a pretty, uh, pretty all-in-one solution. I don't think it will cost more than 20 or 30 bucks with, you know, nipples and shipping and all that stuff, plus a little bit to pad my pocket some for my time and troubles. So, that's that. All right, well, that was a fun little project. It's something I've been wanting to do for quite a while. I've had this 4Runner for a bit, and I always wanted to do the ISR mod, and I finally got to do it my way. Custom making parts, that's my thing. I'm the fabricator. So, I had fun doing it. So, uh, to answer a couple of questions that may come up before the comments get rolling, is I printed those in PETG, which is a great material. It is shiny. It has most of the properties of ABS, which means it can handle the heat of being under hood. It can also handle the pressure of being clamped, not like PLA, which would melt and go spongy and get sucked into the engine. So, those are more than adequate. They're up to the task of doing it. So it took me more time to model those three parts in Fusion 360 than it took me to do the install because I'm not the best at 3D modeling, but I'm working towards it every day to get a little bit better. Now, those particular pieces for the three of them, I printed them all at once on my small FDM printer. It took nine hours to print. And so here's some 3D printing stats for the nerds. It was a 0.2 millimeter layer height with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. I have 1.2 millimeter walls with 50% infill. And that went ahead and that's what made it take nine hours. Less infill probably would have took a little bit less time. But I wanted to make sure that they were sturdy. They're heavy duty, they feel like hockey pucks. I'm pretty pleased with the way they came out. And the fitment is awesome. They're within a 64th of an inch of the factory things. So they're actually oversized, which means they fit in the rubber boots on the intake hose. Just amazing. So, that's it. Please. Click the buttons to like and subscribe and leave a comment to leave me your thoughts about using 3D printing for car parts. It's something that I don't think gets used enough, but here I am, I'm doing it. Trust me, there will be plenty more in the future, so if you think about something you might want to see 3D printed for a car, let me know. If you think I'm messing this all up and the truck's going to explode, also, you know, let me know. Well, that is everything, so thanks for hanging out. Come back next time, and let's build some more cool stuff. Thanks, everybody.